Welcome back. So, like we were talking about in the intro, we're real, I'm very excited about our next interview, which is all about the history of gesture control. We have a pimped up Oculus Rift, and we're going to get into it with a couple of Intel developers, Black Belt developers. Sorry about that. So, we have Thomas and Martin. Welcome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, why don't we start off a little bit about what you guys are doing? Yeah, uh, so we started off. Uh, with gesture control in the beginning. So first we were controlling a quadrocopter with it. We will see that in a few minutes, I think. And uh, yeah, when we, when we thought about it, we thought eh, there must be more in it. So we started making games. We started yeah, thinking about augmented reality and so on and so on. So, so let, let, let's talk a little bit about the beginning of gesture control because yeah. yes. like this is this to me is one of the one of the areas of tech that I've been following for a while because there are no rules right now. We're kind of in this wild wild west of like what's the gesture for closing out a, a, a nap, right? Yeah. Like what's yeah. the gesture for like there's there's yeah. there's no defined set of circumstances currently, yeah. right? And like right. as a like I've I've been a judge on a few of these, and so when mm -hmm. you're going yeah. between them, you're like, well, how do I get out? Right, and you're like, well, this game it was this, and this game it was this, and this game. Right, so right now it's kind of all over. So as as someone who's kind of pioneering the space, how do you how do you approach that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so uh, the the history of gesture control. Um, we had a talk about this um, on several conferences, and uh, we found some footage uh, in the World Wide Web um, where uh, there was a, from WDR. Uh, yeah. It was a si computer science show with R uh, Ranga Yogeshwar. Okay. It, it is a very popular um, uh, a guy uh, for science uh, TV. And uh, he showed in 1990 a project where they are using a video camera, a home video camera, and was attached or connected to um, a PC. I think it was a, a indie workstation or something mm -hmm. like this. And then he was, a he was, he was able to... Um, grab a ball and uh, move it on the TV screen, yeah? So yeah. with a normal video camera. Only yeah. a few uh, years later, two yeah. or three years later. You can also visit that in the Deutsches Museum today. So it was in 1995. And there we had uh, the first uh, webcam, which was used for gesture control. It was the indie cam. Yeah. And also the indie workstation, which we were talking about just a moment ago. And there you could move your head around like this and uh, a skeleton on the screen would follow your movements. So the technology is not that new as we think right mm -hmm. now. It yeah. has been there, but it has not been very useful back in right. those days because you could easily distract it. They were not using depth cameras, right. but just mm -hmm. normal RGB cameras yeah. and so on and so on. Yeah. And then the next step, we, it's a... It was 2006 or something like this, uh, the Wii Remote, for example. Right. So you have a handheld device uh, to control your computer games. Um, but there is a disadvantage uh, because you have to help something in your hand. This, is, uh, this could be a disadvantage. Uh, we prefer to, to make gesture control without sensors. So we need nothing attached to the body. So this is our goal. Yeah. So you were talking about minority report mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, before, <laughs> and uh, we found a, fo a footage on the web. Uh, it is Ob Oblong Industries. Yeah. So the, in 2008, they 2008. built a minority report-like wall, yeah. so where you could move around the objects with your glove, and uh, you could draw ugly pictures like this. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but. but uh, uh, an interesting thing is that Minority Report was never um, supposed to be a good and uh, very usable interface in the, in the beginning. Yeah. So some uh, scientists met um, to, to uh, construct um, how, to contr how they think we control surfaces or software and stuff uh, in the future. And... Um, the idea was not to have the, the, the best way how to control apps in the future. It was about, it was somehow a dystopian view. Yeah. Uh, um, you have to imagine if you are standing in front of a wall and all the time you are doing th things like this, moving objects mm -hmm. and now, and you, you, get you can't tired. believe that you get tired. You get tired. And there is a yeah. symptom for it. It's oh. called gorilla symptom. 
Uh, gorilla, yeah, gorilla arms. arms. You know? <laughs> hey, yeah, I think it's in the Wikipedia as well. <laughs> For sure, Urban Dictionary. It's described there, yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. I mean, it's true. I mean, because I had, I had a Wii, and I tried to play through Zelda, and the next day at work, I was like, oh, my shoulder. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, definitely. but then but then I thought, maybe I'll just get more fit, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is not something you think with Wii, right? That Wii's yeah. going to make you fit. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a whole set of muscle groups that I'm not traditionally yeah. used to yeah. working. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's so, right. so we've gotten to here where we're, we're not going to have gorilla arms. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, then it so. was uh, the year 2012, 2013, well. and uh, we saw a video in the internet. It was, it was on the 1st April of 2012, Thomas, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> it was about a little USB peripheral device. It was called Leap Motion. Okay. Have yeah. you ever heard of Leap Motion? I have one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's this little <laughs> USB peripheral device here, mm -hmm. and there are um, uh, two infrared cameras built in, and three infrared emitting diodes. Mm -hmm. So um, they will send out this infrared LED light, and I will have my hand over the leap motion, um, and um, there is a speckle. They will throw a speckle pattern on my hand. Mm -hmm. And then it gets reflected, and the cameras will detect this, and then they can use a special algorithm uh, to, s to, see to recognize digits. my hand, yeah. to see my gestures. And it's really precise. It's a mm -hmm. precise up to uh, 0 0.01 millimeters. Yeah. yeah. And, in, and you can see it in the demos how it, it actually recognizes your digits and multiple points of your digits for um, yeah. movement. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good piece of technology, but the cone is, is not that that large it's a yeah. it's a it's a very close I think it's about 60 degrees or something mm -hmm. like this uh, which can be uh, um, used and it is also very specialized hardware so you can only use it for hand tracking yes but this uh, is done very well with the yeah. leap motion and um, what we've done with the leap motion was yeah. um, to control drones oh fun yeah so uh, the idea was um, flying forward using this gesture backward to the right, to the left, and so on and so on. And you are able to control a flying object with it easily. Yes. It's, it's not a problem. And the, the cool part is you can implement this stuff, uh, the leap motion, with Java, with Python, with .NET, okay. and the APIs are really good. And okay. they are really easy to use. We were able to let a Parrot AR drone fly within four hours Three hours um, really? were Wi-Fi problems. So, <laughs> <laughs> in the in the result, uh, within one hour, we were able to implement uh, drone control, and um, we prepared a video for this. Oh, okay. And yes. uh, maybe we have a look on this. Absolutely. Two I think AR drones do that. fighting each other, one must fall style. Oh yeah. my With goodness. With leap motion. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Are we able to play that? Oh no! Oh, uh, that's the wrong. That's, right there. that's the wrong video. Could be. So, Sorry, can we start with the second video then? Ah, yeah. the next video. <laughs> we should uh, start with the other one. Uh. Perfect. It's Battle of the Drones. Battle of the, the Drones. Fire Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So at first, it's the one must fall style. The idea is two drones are battling each other no. and uh, you have to push another drone and then it falls down. So, the first rule of Battle of the Drones, there are no rules. And now you can see, we have uh, different uh, video angles there, and uh, you can see on the down, uh, downside of the picture there, uh, how we control the drone. Yeah, and now when I push Thomas' drone... Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Victorious. <laughs> Lord, bam. So this is how it uh, looks like, and it makes much fun uh, uh, to control robots uh, uh, or drones or whatever with a leap motion. Yeah, and, and here you can also see that gesture control can be very intuitive. If you would do this with a yeah. normal um, flight controller, then it would be somehow more... Uh, Maybe even more difficult to do it, but uh, the way with smaller gestures, definitely. I mean, if yeah. you've any anyone who's really done any kind of drone flying, <laughs> you've noticed that some of the controls just aren't as precise, yeah. Yeah. and like the 360 range of motion sometimes yeah. Yeah. understanding that is, is a yeah. little bit. Okay. Difficult. Okay. So this is how it looks like, and um, 
Cool. Excellent. Okay, so, so we, we started off with doing gesture control with drones. And where did you go from there? Um, next step was uh, that we came in contact with Intel okay. yes. uh, because they've started uh, to uh, build their own 3D cameras. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our very first contact was with uh, Sense 3D. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Sense 3D was the first, I would say, prototype of, uh, uh, of Intel gesture control. And uh, we were invited or no, we just uh, attended a hackathon in Munich. Okay. Yeah. And the idea was uh, to implement some, yeah. Yeah. software for it. So, so we came up with the idea to use the same... Um, the same idea with the same this idea. Uh, um, battle of the drones. But with um, a different metaphor. Okay. Because in this case we are using a, what we are calling a hand spaceship. So uh, with the leap motion. So, yeah. so like every kid has done before. Yeah, this is a metaphor. Yeah. So if you say you are controlling a drone like this, um, this is uh, the leap motion metaphor. And uh, for the uh, Sense 3D, it's a front-facing camera, so, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, you are in front of the camera and then you ha have the ability uh, to recognize uh, one or two fists or hands, yeah, and um, so we just thought about, we, how can we control the drone? It's not possible to do it like this. It's not a good idea, it's not intuitive. Oh, we tried it and it wasn't yeah, 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 very intuitive. Not. So our idea was, why not implementing a metaphor which is comparable to a very old airplane yoke? You know, so you yeah. are in front of the camera doing this gesture right. and then flying forward, flying backward, flying to the right and to the left. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, we also have a video for that. So okay. this is yeah. the first video <laughs> which we were, yeah. were seeing before. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, okay, so was this on the perceptual computing SDK? Or this was the yeah, perceptual okay. computing SDK. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So um, maybe we have a, oh, a, a look. Oh, there is perceptual computing yeah, now SDK. Yeah, it is. <laughs> perfect. That's, that's really perfect. So um, we were in a lost place near Munich. <coughs> and um, <laughs> uh, you can see how we control the Parrot AR drone right now. And um, we have different gestures implemented. So we start the drone with a thumbs, thumbs up gesture. So now the drone takes off easily. Then we have the left and right control. And uh, the drone is yeah. moving the same right. way. Yeah, the same it's, way. It's, it's doing what it's told, <laughs> right. perfect. Right. But uh, we have to be uh, honest, uh, the first SDK, uh, uh, it was mm, uh, some, it was unprecise because it, it, it was a prototype, you yeah. know. So uh, for us, it was really hard. Uh, we had to do smoothing uh, yeah. of all the values we received for the, the fists and so mm -hmm. on. But uh, in the effect, we were really uh, uh, able to control the drone, like you can see here. Yeah, so, so in this demo, we still use the bilateral filter, but with uh, more and more SDKs coming out, so at least with R8, we were able to remove the filter again, because uh, by yeah. then, uh, the precision was really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, one, one of the issues with the first SDK was that there was just so much data, and the organization yeah. of the data was was yeah. not was was not highly structured. Yeah. So it was yeah. it was very difficult for developers yeah, right. to go, oh, my, like, what, what do I do with all of this yeah. data? And yeah. it was and it, there was there was even things in it when you really dug in that they had people tracking or eye tracking, yeah. but it wasn't as precise yeah. to, to be useful, yeah. right? So that there, it, the the SDK has come a quite a long way yeah. Since, yeah. since this one. Yeah. And nowadays we are also using, we are still using the perceptual computing SDK in mm -hmm. the Deutsches Museum. So we have an exhibition oh, okay. project yeah. there yeah. where people can drive around with a small robot car. Ah. Yeah. And, and, and children love it. <laughs> they love it. Um, uh, the, uh, last weekend we were at the Deutsches Museum again and we, uh, we had to repair, uh, repair a motor. Okay. Uh, um, and we just changed it and after the exhibition was working again, so many children and parents going <laughs> along and there, there was a crowd standing in front and everybody wanted to try to control the robot with these gestures. Yeah. Definitely. So there the Sense 3D is still in use. Yeah. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. So, I mean, it was it was very interesting for me to, to, to kind of follow this as, at, at the same time that you guys were, were doing it, in that now it's called Intel, Intel Real Sense Technology. Mm -hmm. right? Right. So they've yeah. given it a new name, but yeah. to me, I liked the concept of perceptual computing, right? <laughs> that, they, that they call, I mean, it, this is not catchy for the mainstream, yeah. but at the same time, like, it's, it, it, was, it was a very accurate representation of what 
yeah. everyone was trying to do. <laughs> yeah. At first we were using the title Perceptual Computing also for our talks, but it was not, not very catchy, so we had to change it to ge Gesture Control. Gesture because control. People uh, would not uh, understand it somehow. It's yeah. not a common term. No, uh, yeah. definitely. But yeah. I mean, one of the reasons why I I like what Intel is trying to do with this one is that they the potential for people tracking is there, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. for me, it be, like gesture control comes a lot becomes a lot more interesting when half the battle can be done with my eyes, <laughs> right? Yeah. That. Like if I, you know, have a trigger gesture and then I'm looking somewhere and then I know that it's going to happen here or there. Mm -hmm. Like this type of thing is kind of what I've been waiting for. Even like in like a, a triple monitor setup for me to look over there and click. <laughs> Why don't I have that yet? I mean, really, yeah. what, like, these like, like these types of things are 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 yeah. very complicated. Mm -hmm. They're incredibly complicated to execute. Yeah. But they're that they're, they're that kind of thin edge of the wedge that the average consumer will be able to go, I see why I need this now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I also know uh, uh, some guy who is doing a lot of eye tracking mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, he created a game, a horror game, so when, oh. when with the <laughs> Oculus Rift, and when the user is looking away, he puts monsters in the, uh, at the side where nobody is looking. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to play this game. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh my god. Yeah. So, so you, you guys, I don't, I don't mean to jump steps, but are, are we, are we ready to talk about the Rift, or is there, is there a step in between? Um, I just thought I that was a good segue we, we, over. We, we could mention okay. that uh, in the. Meantime, also after the Sense 3D, okay, the, 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 Sense 3D. the Microsoft Kinect was published, uh, ah, the, the, the second version mm -hmm. uh, for PC as well. And uh, we did some um, yeah, gesture control uh, apps. We've implemented some, um, for example, a drone control again, okay. but with a different metaphor. So the idea was uh, to control a drone with a body joystick, so your whole body is a joystick. Oh, fun. Yeah, and uh, we were in the t uh, Technical University of Munich. We were there, and we made some experiments and go, go, uh, flying forward and backward and to the right, and to the left, and oh. everybody had to laugh because it looked that that funny. Yeah, that really I, funny. I would, I would hurt my side. I'm sure, I'm sure I would like, bang into a wall or something. Yeah. Um, I'd be the person who yeah. you're like. Yeah, we, oh. yeah. we, we plan to make another video with body joystick uh, and battle of the drones. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, now we can... Uh, 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 maybe we uh, just talk a little bit about the real sense now, because mm -hmm. uh, before we start mm -hmm. with uh, the Oculus and uh, with the augmented reality stuff, we have one more game. So okay. the Intel real sense, yeah, which, is, uh, which we can see uh, here. Maybe we can uh, show it into the camera. Yep. So, mm -hmm. um, so this is um, um, the um, F200 from Intel yes. real sense. So, um, this uh, was the second version of the camera of Intel RealSense. So and first was the perceptual computing SDK. Then now it we was have the Intel RealSense, Intel right? Real so Sense. this camera, you can okay, you you can see Creative. Mm -hmm. They only uh, build the housing for for the camera, right. but the, te the technology, the technology inside, inside is, inside all, is uh, all from Intel. Is Intel, and um, with this camera, uh, you can do so many things. You mm -hmm. can track hands. You can recognize gestures. There are standard gestures already implemented. Thumbs up, thumbs down, yes. one, two, three, high five. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also the um, face tracking capabilities. So yes. 78 yeah. points in the face, yeah. uh, so that's, uh, that's really good. Yes, yeah, so you, you can become an ogre or a princess or all of the yeah, other things. Yeah. We, 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 we've seen uh, B BK do that in a number of keynotes where he's, he's controlling Shrek's face, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's great. Yeah, it's really um, good. So what we did with the technology is, at first we created a game which is browser-based. Uh, in Germany there was a popular game. Have you ever heard <laughs> of Moorhuhn? <laughs> No. Moorhun. Moorhun. No, I missed crazy it. Crazy chicken in <laughs> It was America. crazy chicken in America and oh, crazy uh, England. Chicken. Yes. Maybe okay. you've ever heard yes, of it. I've heard I of think that the German audience uh, uh, watching uh, <laughs> this show here, they they really are Moorhun. I know oh, this okay. game. I think it was about 2000. Yeah, 1999. 1999. 2000. And it, it went viral. This game. It was about. Um, uh, it was a really, how to say, uh, uh, it, it, it was. A silly game. It was yeah, a silly game. Was say, there, was there was some yeah. birds flying around, yeah. and you just have to shot them with a with a mouse yeah. click, yeah. and that's yeah. it. Uh, and yeah. So 15 years later, we thought we have to do yeah. this again, but yeah. 
using gesture controls. Gesture controls. Gesture controls. And there we control. have the, our third video. Oh, so this is okay. our third video and uh, this video is uh, um, maybe a little bit more interesting from the technical point of view because okay. here we want to um, describe how we implemented our own gesture. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. it's mm -hmm. a shooting gesture somehow. Yeah. And so about the game. So Thomas and me, yeah. This is the bird, yeah? Yes. And we have... Uh, You're doing it wrong! We, so, uh, <laughs> we have to shoot this bird. What do we have to and Thomas <laughs> doesn't know how to do it. So I'm it's giving him the F200 into Reels and camera. <laughs> 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 and now the idea is uh, to shoot uh, the birds with a gesture. Okay. And um, so Martin is now trying to tell me how so, to do it. Yeah. So the, you can see the shooting gesture right now. Bam! And that's, that's the game. <laughs> And now we want to, uh, uh, to have a look into the game and uh, how we realize the gesture. So this is the shoot ge shot mm -hmm. gesture. And um, so this is the game. And you, you see the crosshair is directly related to your front-facing finger. And uh, we can also see that now. So Martin is moving around when he's doing the shot gesture. Um, a shot is triggered and he's trying to uh, kill the birds. <laughs> so the whole game is written mm -hmm. in HTML5, so um, okay. the data from the gesture camera is provided via a socket, or a web socket in this case, and uh, it's completely wet, written HTML5 and CoffeeScript, right. it, it translates to JavaScript, yeah. so, yeah. you know. And now we want, to, uh, ah, this, okay, we want to show you how do you implement your own gesture. So you can see there is a trigger finger and the hand base, so blue point and uh, green point, and what we are doing is measuring the speed, how the blue point of the thumb right. uh, will come near to the hand base, which is the green point. Yeah. And if, it's, if a defined velocity is reached, mm -hmm. uh, or speed in this case, then we can trigger a shot. Yeah. So this is the analyzer so that we can control if our gestures are working yeah. in and HTML5 as well. And the most difficult part about this was uh, distinguishing between the shot and the, sh and the reload, because yeah. It is really because hard the, to tell the if you're doing down yeah. right. with the with so it's yeah, yeah because definitely. If you're doing yeah, a re reload, uh, the, the 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 green point the and the blue should, point should they will stay. have in, will be in the same axis, yeah. and and you have to yeah. divide between those. Unless you have really um, lazy fingers. <laughs> 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 definitely. Oh, very yeah. interesting. And this is also why um, a, a demonstration of what the real sense SDK is able to do because it is, it can be programmed with. Java, it can be programmed with C Sharp, it can be programmed with JavaScript, with a web socket, and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Yeah. So how 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 actually how was it to kind of filter out this data specifically from from the volume of data that's available? Yeah. Because there's still a tremendous amount of, of data that's being generated and, and it's actually even more accurate. Yeah. than the previous generation. So how, how was it to try to, try to filter yeah. all these things so, out? So we, in this case, we were just using the extremities. So okay. the SDK provides us with the front extremities or the top extremities. And uh, there we, have, we just have two points which we need to use. And then the data is reduced massively. So we don't have to filter out the whole point cloud and uh, filter the data we need. We just get the most important things and everything else can so be done So incredibly in simple then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would not say that. <laughs> Let's say it's simple. It's simple. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So you've now decided to mount the F200 onto an Oculus Rift. Yeah. We next, just next level. Next level. Yeah. You, ma um, you mastered the shooting. We mastered the shooting. <laughs> we've implemented our own gestures and now we decided we want to use uh, F200 in a way which is not meant to be used. So right. uh, in this case, we thought um, maybe we can attach the 3D camera onto an Oculus Rift onto in this a, case yeah, uh, to use the features of the F200 to realize a Terminator vision. Okay. There was yeah. a morning I stood up and I thought, how cool would it be if I can see the world through the eyes of a Terminator? <laughs> Yeah. As, you time ask your, time as, you, as you ask yourself, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most mornings uh, before I have yeah. coffee. <laughs> Fortunately, um, our company TNG Technology Consulting, yeah. uh, they allow us uh, to use 10% of our working time uh, to work on such things. And uh, so, 
on a so-called winter retreat. We started with a team of 10 people mm. and we did most of the work in one day. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So can you actually describe the rest of the technology yes. that's outside yeah. the rift? Yes, of course. Absolutely. So we have two USB cameras, which are just normal USB HD cameras. And these, uh, the, the images from these cameras just get streamed into the Oculus Rift. Yeah. So yep. this is, um, uh, maybe we can also show the laptop screen now. And as you can see, the fur, the, we have two camera images. Uh, there's also a so-called barrel distortion, and this is because uh, the lenses in the Oculus Rift are creating are, a distortion. Are, are creating this distortion so that when yeah. you yeah. put them on your eyes, you get the full right. 3D Right, so that you have the right yeah. feeling, mm -hmm. so yeah. this is the idea. Um, yeah. And then we have uh, these two cameras, and then we have the real sense attached. So the real sense is just used for additional processing. So it is used for feature detection. It detects faces, mm -hmm. and it can identify also faces. Identify faces. Uh, it can mm -hmm. do speech recognition uh, and uh, speech synthesis. Uh, we can detect those 78 landmarks in the face. Um, we can do emotion detection as well. So um, Emotion detection. Emotion oh. detection, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty and sure the Terminator can't do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, he, he, really, he, he really can? He can, okay. he can. Yeah. He Mostly can. fear. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and um, there is another feature, um, it can measure the heart rate when the light condition is uh, really? good enough. Really? Yeah. I didn't how, know how that. Do you, do you know how it works? No, I don't know how that works. Do you want to know yes, how it works? Yes, I do want to know <laughs> how that works, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with each and every heartbeat, yeah. about 15 grams of blood get pressed into the head and this results in a very, very minimal color change in the skin, especially in, in, in this region During here. During the thinner areas mm. so, of the skin, uh, right. yeah. Okay. And th this camera is able to detect this because, because of those little color changes and it can uh, measure the heart rate. Not that precise like with a medical device, but... It's good enough. It's good so enough. Give you a rough estimate. A rough yeah, yeah, estimate. Yeah. We used it for job interviews, so that's good. <laughs> No, come on. <laughs> not, not at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. I'd be so, all in for adding that into a job interview. Okay, so augmented, augmented reality uh, it means uh, that you um, en enrich your human senses with computer-generated extra information. Why did we choose the Oculus Rift? Um, the answer is easy because we had no access to augmented reality glasses with transparent displays. Yeah. This uh, device was built one year ago. ago. Yeah, okay. So, um, and there were no, no really good AR glasses available. Yeah. Now, one year yeah. later, we have the HoloLens. Yes. Um, we have Epson Blue, uh, Moverio. Yeah, the mm -hmm. have, 300. Is, the, the is that one quite good? A, yeah, yeah, I tried it at the MWC okay. and it it was good. Uh, the field of view was not uh, that not very wide. Th 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 that very wide, okay. but it was it was pretty amazing to see through the Epson. Mm. But we have one more oh, company okay. which is uh, which is really building yeah. a, a very impressive device. And this is Athir. It's a small Silicon Valley based startup. Okay, and they are uh, creating a with semi-transparent displays, they are creating a, a glasses uh, which have a field of view of about 55 degrees. Okay. So we can cover most of uh, the field of view mm -hmm. of a human with uh, that display. And um, you can also use it, uh, it is, um, it ha its light is strong enough to, um, to remove the, the normal environment. So we can use it in okay. every en environment. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, the the only the, the only AR uh, glasses that I tended to actually like was the the Sony prototype. Mm -hmm. I mean, only be, but they, they're it was so limited in, in what it offered you. And I, I don't play tennis, so <laughs> that was kind of, like the the best use case was was one that was kind of outside of my 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 actual yeah. use yeah. case. So. Okay, so, okay. so maybe we make a short demonstration uh, about the Terminator vision right now. Terminator vision, yeah. here we go, a little so, demo. Um, the this idea is a live is demo. Live this is demo. A live demo. <laughs> so it's definitely going to crash. <laughs> uh, no, no, hopefully, hopefully not. <laughs> and, but it's very loud, so we have to ch check uh, if uh, speech recognition works uh, good enough right now. So, Exciting Thomas. Exciting uh, stuff. Yeah. Look at all of this. Yeah. Oh, Thomas? Glasses I, are I going on. Glasses, okay. No? Ah, uh, okay. 
And now you can already see that. So I hope that you are able to see uh, uh -huh. what, what, Thomas, see. what Thomas is seeing. Yeah. So, so, you, you, so I you can your now face. see the, the, the face. You can see the 70 eyed landmarks. And you can see that he is happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, really. Looks surprised. Sad. Now surprised. Sad. Oh, sad doesn't work right now. <laughs> <laughs> happy works. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you so can see the distance to his The distance, face right. Also. So if I come near to the camera, then the, the distance will change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now we want, uh, we want uh, the augmented rift uh, that, uh, yeah, it can recognize my face. Yeah. So we have to speak with the, the augmented rift right now. This is always the most difficult this part. This is the most difficult part <laughs> because it's really loud here, but we want to try it. So um, speaker is on and now we try it. Okay, Rift. How can I help you? This is Martin. This is Martin. Is this really not you? Yes. I will remember that user 101 <laughs> is not you. Okay, uh, I, I think he didn't understand Martin, but what was it? Not Thomas? two. <laughs> Not two, okay, whatever. <laughs> but you can see now over my face there is a, a textual information and yes. there, this is the name the device understood. Uh, so it, it's how it works, yeah? Okay. And then you can speak with the augmented rift, who is this and so on and uh, okay. uh, you can do some interactions with it. So it, it could help uh, blind face people mm -hmm. uh, if this is not such a huge device. So. Um, um, a friend of mine is uh, face blind yeah. and it would help him to have some normal glasses. So imagine you have those semi-transparent mm -hmm. uh, displays, those AR glasses, and uh, you can tell a, a glass, hey, this hey, is... This is this person. This is this and that person, and uh, it could help him. And to help you recognize, For, yeah. 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 Okay, For, you can have a little earpiece so only you just hear it. <laughs> or yeah, something like yeah, this, something right? something like right. that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So how long how, how long has uh, this been around? Like like how it was one year ago you made one this? One year ago, yeah. Excellent. At the so-called exactly. winter retreat, yeah. The winter exactly retreat. one year around ago we implemented the first version. Yeah. So we started off with a Java implementation. Yeah. But some, at some point in time, we switched to a C Sharp implementation. Yeah. Okay. Because there were uh, challenges uh, uh, we had to solve. We had, had many problems. These are prototypes. Mm -hmm. So the Oculus Rift yeah. second version was a development kit. Uh, the F200 was a development kit mm -hmm. and so on and so on. So you cannot expect that there are many uh, libraries are available or that they are well maintained. So you have to do everything on your own mm -hmm. and or you have uh, to use uh, the libraries which are available. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time um, the Java bindings for Intel sense should be good enough. Today. today, one year ago, if everything was really new, it wasn't the case. Yeah, yeah. But the Oculus is yeah. uh, somehow difficult to uh, to implement because the SDKs are really, yeah, they, they change a lot, and in the meantime, the the libraries don't get, go the same way. So right. the, yeah. that is really difficult. So we hope with with the final version that we don't have these problems anymore, yeah. and. Uh, also, maybe with the HTC mm. Vive or something yeah. like this. Absolutely. And um, why, did, uh, why did we use the Oculus Rift uh, or this combination of hardware? Because mm -hmm. it was available. It yeah. was, we ha uh, had um, access to this devices. Yeah. So. And one um, one year ago, there was no strong AR implementation out there, and and even even still today, like yeah. you, you you had three examples, and those those still aren't very common or yeah. <laughs> very yeah, yeah, much right. out Absolutely. there. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, at this winter retreat, we were 10 consultants working on this device for this yeah. special day. Very so, fun. And we were able to do it. And if you th uh, have a look into the history, uh, Ivan Sutherland, Steve Mann, Fats Starner, wow. these are the pioneers of augmented reality yeah. and stuff. And uh, they would be so happy uh, if they are able to, to, <laughs> to yeah. implement AR devices in one day. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds crazy because sounds they had crazy. to work years on this, maybe. Yeah. I mean, if you if you look at the landscape of virtual reality and augmented reality, this is I think I think right now we're sitting at a time where 
it's actually entering into the real world in like not a look it's it's here but it's actually going into like large like large scale commercial implementations for AR are incredibly common all over Asia right yeah. like all like very common okay like mm. I, I, there's there's one kind of near my house where they they put a they have a screen up and they have a camera and it tracks the people and then it puts like whatever movie that's hot on the week characters from the yeah, movie yeah. will chase you around the square <laughs> right? you know you know what i mean it's a it's a very it's a very basic form yeah. of ar yeah but it's incredibly common yeah right yeah. so like you, you don't need to look far anymore for useful examples that are yeah. highly interactive and there are already some uh, examples of uh, fields of application where we where we actually saw some demos with it for example in traffic where we had yeah. Where Continental proposed a study for non-static head-up displays, mm. which can, for example, show you uh, if you are too close to the car driving in front of you, or uh, the, or even for the navigation system, yeah. so it can project where you need to go onto the street instead of and just showing you. Another project is a head-mounted display. Uh, it's called Skylands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's meant to be used by pilots, so that you. Um, uh, have real-time image processing, so the video cameras uh, um, attached to the airplane, they will f uh, film the land strip and they will recognize mm. the land strip and the surface maybe and so on. And then you can connect this with GPS information, with uh, speed, speed and so on and so on. And then you can give some special in instructions to the pilot mm -hmm. uh, uh, how to land the airplane, with which parameters and so on and so on. Yeah. The perfect landing. And perfect landing, right. And um, now the miniaturization goes on. 3D cameras are getting smaller and smaller. So what's smaller. this one? So this one is um, the R200, and it's much smaller so this than is the, new R200. the F200. This is a, a, a very new camera. Um, so R200 means uh, attach it to a tablet, and uh, uh, so it's rear faced. It's not front faced. Okay. It's rear faced, and. Um, you can do nearly the same in the future, like you can do today with the Kinect. But okay. it only weighs 50 grams. Interesting. And this is really crazy. The, the Kinect weighs about, I would say, 1.5 kilograms. Mm. Yeah, and without the cables. Without yeah, the cables. Without the cables. So, and, now and it's connected by US, U, USB... That's uh, your USB 3. three. USB 3. USB 3 so. on the side there? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, there, there are actually two versions of the, of the Intel RealSense camera. There's the R200 and the R100, which has generally gone into the tablets in the past, like, mm -hmm. uh, like yeah. in the, the, Dell, the Dell Venue 8. We right. also have yeah. that with us. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I, I love yeah. Dell, I love the Dell Venue 8. I, I think it like is a, it's a beautiful tablet, yeah. and the yeah. fact that it has this 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 camera inside, I thought was really interesting. And yeah. I remember when I first saw it, I'm like, how did they fit that in there? Right? Yeah. I was like, what do you what do you yeah, what do you mean? That's crazy. Yeah. But then you get into it, and it's actually not this camera, because like this because like this camera is. Like the data that you pull from this camera yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But the R100 is actually like a bag of parts that they kind of spread throughout the tablet <laughs> to create this yeah, kind yeah, of depth yeah, perception, yeah, yeah. right? But so the the value between like these two different cameras is, to me, um, for for business things like volumetric calculation, yeah. right, is like a very thin edge of the wedge for how people can can easily start to understand yeah. why you need depth perception. Yeah, right, yeah. and it's yeah. much easier to calculate with like just and, a volumetric. Yeah. But and you can also do things like um, change the focus of a picture right. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is very that's fun. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. That's which is really very cool fun. Feature, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but the the newest camera of Intel RealSense, it's, mm. it's not the R two hundred. It's not the R two hundred. Okay, the tell, me R300. tell me everything. Tell me everything. I don't yeah, know about this. R three hundred. Oh, and uh, it looks like. <coughs> And um, here, um, how, how to say, uh, it should be a drop-in replacement for the F200, okay. which is used yeah. by the Terminator Vision. So this is the SR300. Um, it's the, the prototype here we okay. have here, so it's uh, not yet production ready. And uh, how it works, uh, did we talk about the technology, how everything works? So there's time of flight, for example. Let's go over it we again. We have coded light yeah, okay. and so on. Yeah. In this case, it's uh, coded light. And it can 
nearly do the same as the F200. Yeah, it, it can pretty much do exactly the same, but it's more precise. So it's, it's a successor which is just um, dealing with precision in this case. So you, get, you guys keep on saying pretty much the same. What do you, like, so what, what, what's different? It's better. Yeah. More it has, precise. It has a yeah. better what's recognition of the face, for example. So if you saw the yeah. F200, the contours of the face right. were still a bit wobbly. The, yeah. the, they were moving around. And with the SR300, everything's a little more precise. It is, but everything else should be just a drop-in replacement. Okay, so yeah. you, you, you guys have started using this one, or you... You just had it here. And you're uh, like, Woo. Uh, we, are, uh, we want to um, uh, implement a, a new showcase with it. Uh, okay. So controlling a BB-8 zero ball. Oh, BB-8! I love BB-8. We control it with uh, a Star Wars-like gesture, so it, it definitely fits to your yeah, to uh, shirt. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and so the idea is uh, to control the BB-8 uh, with just such gestures, like a real yeah. Jedi does. Okay. Yeah, you know. So awesome. and uh, we want to use the SR 300 for this and. Uh, of course, we make another video of it, so yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I should, should get you guys this shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have we have a, a YouTube channel. Uh, it's oh, called okay. Parrots on Java, Parrots and on then Java. you can uh, 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 watch those videos and showcases. So yeah. you you've kind of moved away from the from all the drone control. Is there is there a reason you're you're less you're less in love with our? You have to reinvent yourself yeah. uh, every time. Yeah. That's true. And uh, um, so. We started with drones, and then it, uh, it was getting boring. Mm. So then we moved to AR. Now we are starting to uh, do some telepresence and telerobotics. Oh, and interesting. Yeah, now yeah. We, are we, we are using the Now robot. Uh, which, uh, may which maybe which you that? already saw that in the video. Yeah. So in and the video, oh, it the was little this little guy <laughs> yeah, who was and telling us the rules of Battle yeah. of the Drones. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, TNG Technology Consulting, they, they bought us an hour to, uh, to play with it. This sounds like a and great place. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool. A magical place with all the gadgets. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, totally. And, uh, our idea is uh, to, uh, to attach a 3D camera to the now because the now is not yet able uh, to have a depth perception. So we want to uh, attach into real sense and uh, so that we can give the robot, the ability uh, to do augmented reality, yeah. which gets yeah. streamed Very nice. into an Oculus Rift or some AR classes we are wearing. So the um, the best demo that, that that I've seen with a robot recently was there was one at MWC. It wasn't it wasn't this robot that you guys had. It was a slightly different one. Uh, Pepper. Yeah, the little one. Uh, no. Or there's also the, the, the Darwin. I would say no, no. So he was he he, he was maybe like. Okay. You know, like, like this high, right? Yeah. And yeah, and then he 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 was white and red, and he tracked red. Ah, okay. Right. So there was a red ball, and you could oh. throw it around. Oh yeah. And he would track red. Yeah. And, but then but then he would fall down like like a yeah. child, yeah. and then stand back up. I watched him for like. This is another interesting. Thirty minutes. <laughs> this is another interesting feature mm. of the R two hundred. Uh, I, I'm not sure uh, if it works with uh, the front-facing camera, but with the R200, there is an example in the SDK included. Uh, it's called uh, uh, augmented reality, but the, or object, object, object tracking. Object tracking. Object and this is a cool thing because yeah. uh, you have a scene, mm -hmm. you're recording a scene, and then you can say, track this point of the scene. It could be a ball with a special pattern or whatever. And then you can move around uh, the ball and the camera is able to track it. Real time. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this is a really interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, it, this is this to me the object tracking is what makes a demo really interactive, yeah. right? That, right. So the, the the guy was just like, oh, your your backpack is red, so he's he's tracking you now, yeah. and yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> My new robot friend is chasing me. Right? Dominate. <laughs> yeah. But Dominate. then he. <laughs> <laughs> My mission is to protect, protect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then I had to like hide my bag, then we had the ball and we were kind of tracking the ball around. I mean like, it was literally hours of fun, right? Yeah, there was also a, a or it was not a conference, it was a hackathon called Nodecopter, where you can, could control a quadrocopter with no chairs. 
And uh, they were building the same thing. And then some guy brought pizza, and unfortunately, he had a red shirt on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be quite. Is there a video of that? <laughs> yeah. I can track that. <laughs> <laughs> if we can find it. Yeah. Definitely. So we're, we're actually in, in, in the final stretch of the interview. Uh, but I, I just wanted to kind of give you guys the floor if there's anything else that you think that we missed about either like the, the Black Belt Developer Program or Gesture Control and Futures or maybe Hopes for Standards? Maybe? Yeah. And so, so maybe we can talk a little bit about the uh, Software Innovator Program and the okay, Developer sure. Program. Yeah. Uh, because... Uh, all this would not have been possible without uh, getting the newest hardware. And we are software innovators, and as software, Intel software innovators, we get early access to all these different camera technologies and mm -hmm. also some laptops and so on yeah. and so on. So we have loads of laptops yeah. at home. So and this is uh, uh, what we are doing. So we have our technical block, yeah. and then we are we are doing the, such showcases. We are. Uh, um, uh, making uh, YouTube videos, we are writing articles about those different camera systems, about advantages and disadvantages, and so on. Uh, the blog is called parrotsonjava.com. Parrotsonjava.com. Parrots on Java. Excellent. Yeah, because on Java, because it's an island, but not only this. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just visit our blog and um, be well informed about the bleeding edge technology going on with 3D cameras and what Perfect. you can do with it. Yeah, so this yeah. is excellent, yeah. excellent. And then, um, uh, yeah, we love it to have the newest hardware to make showcases, and because of that, and many, many conference mm -hmm. talks all over the world, uh, we finally reached the status um, Intel Black Belt uh, Intel software Black Belt, yeah. developer, and uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, Great award given to us, uh, given to us, and we loved it to be. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I've always, I've always really enjoyed my talk with black belts, especially because when you go on to uh, the, the Intel Developer Software page, the articles are there's lots of yeah. code sharing, and there's yeah. like just like lots of like really open. It's a really openness yeah. about disseminating information and really trying to like push the industry yeah. forward. Yeah. And that's not always the case with all developer communities. Some of them are a little more. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, and, and you are open uh, to discuss different uh, uh, systems, so um, um, you can talk about a leap motion or a Kinect as well. Right, so, exactly. and this is a really cool thing that you are really free in your articles. Uh, we wrote an article about gesture, con what we are talking about yeah. here, Perfect. and with code sharing for different devices, and it's cool. Yeah, and awesome. uh, they also gave us an English translation for yeah. that article. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so we have a, we can reach <laughs> the German audience and, and the English, English audience, audience. So it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on board, yeah. showing yeah. me the real-life Terminator. <laughs> thanks for inviting us. Yeah. yeah and if, if you want to join our company, we're still hiring. <laughs> oh, here we go. The, the, fi nice the try. final yeah, yeah. pitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. so we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Sasha's going to be talking about his favorite subject of the show, the Microsoft Surface Hub. If you haven't gotten an overdose of it yet, stay tuned for the next slot, and you're, you'll be a convert. <laughs> 